Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Hopefully you're all having a good day today. This is Wiredog Sec back with another video for you guys. But before we get into it, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and then if you enjoyed the video, hit the comment section with your thoughts and opinions on the information discussed in the video. Right, let's get down into it. Now you may be out there looking into penetration testing, maybe you want to get into that field, industry, what have you. And you decided to take the EJPT exam, which is a junior or beginner level penetration testing exam. But the caveat is that it is hands-on. So in order to pass the exam successfully, you'll have to conduct various different tasks in order to find the answer to those questions on the exam. Now, if you've been going through the training, of course, it's free on INE's website. It has everything you need there, but maybe you, you need some other information that'll help you along the way, some other resources. Well, you're in luck because we're going to cover that right here. This is a cheat sheet for the EJPT or any other type of penetration testing exam. Heck, you can even use it in the real world. But let's just go over a few of these cheat sheets that have basically notes that other people have recorded for your reference. This one here is on GitHub. And as you can see here, it's got information about networking routes, IP route, etc. How to add a route to the network that you're on, DNS stuff, subdomain enumeration. Now, when it comes to enumeration, you'll be doing that quite a bit when it comes to these penetration testing exams or even in the real world, because you need to enumerate, enumerate, enumerate in order to find those security holes, those security weaknesses in the network or in different systems in order to exploit those security holes. And enumeration obviously helps out with that because you're gathering all this information and data from those systems. All right, let's get back to it. Footprint and scanning, got FPing, NMAP. When I took the exam, I didn't even bother with FPing. I just used NMAP. NMAP is pretty much like the golden standard when it comes to port scanning, stuff like that. And it goes over in map scan types, gives you a little description over them, spotting firewall, stuff like that. TCP wrap gives you a little information of what the reflected or displayed information from those in map scams represents. TCP wraps goes over what that means. Uh, you got mass scan here, vulnerability assessment stuff, search exploit, exploit DB. If you find a particular protocol service type of software operating system, that may have some kind of exploit that's publicly available. Well, you can go into search exploit, look that up in the Linux command line, or you can go to ExploitDB's website, type in that CVE number, or just do a Google search in the CVE number and see if there's a publicly available exploit. Download the exploit, open it up, and modify it to fit your needs. Uh, MS F console search stuff. Okay, yeah, as I said, Google Nessus. Nessus is another vulnerability scanner out there. I believe there is a free one available that you can utilize as well. You just need to sign up for the website and then download the software, install it. You know how it goes. So it goes over banner grabbing stuff, uh, directory, file enumeration, GoBuster. I've used that quite a bit. Durbuster, I've used it. Derb or Derby, however you want to pronounce it. I've used that as well when looking at websites and trying to, to determine what directories are on that website. You can build out some kind of map to it. Sometimes they'll have vulnerable directories or they'll have a directory that contains like robot.txt, which can contain information that can help you in your pen test engagement or on the exam itself. Cross site scripting stuff here. See SQL injection stuff. I mean, how to test for SQL injection. This is a common way to test for SQL injection. Uh, SQL map stuff, which is SQL map is basically an automated like exploit tool for SQL injection attacks. Uh, Windows shares enumeration. There's a lot of good stuff here just in this cheat sheet by itself. Um, interpreter reverse shells tells you the tells you the commands and the options for those uh, handlers, what have you. Adding virtual hosts. I mean, you might come across this. You might need to modify the host directory in order to get a you know, exploit to working properly. Miscellaneous stuff, I mean, just goes over basic information about it. Verse cell, check for flags, users home directory. Flags could be in numerous places. Home directory is just one of those places. PHP web shells, that's very common. Enumerate, 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 as I explained before. 
Sometimes you'll get stuck in a particular area. Well, maybe you need to go back to enumeration, enumerate some more things. Maybe there's another avenue to get where you need to go in order to get to that loot or that flag to answer the particular question or to obtain that information that you can put on a report if you're doing a penetration test. All right, let's take a look at another one here. All right, here's another cheat sheet when it comes to EJPT. But as I said, a lot of this stuff you can use on other penetration testing exams or in the real world. All right, goes over NMAP stuff, a little more information about that, how to use NMAP. It's got some more descriptions there, FPing, uh, some other ways of doing NMAP. You want to put your scan information inside of a text file, which I do recommend doing. It helps tr keep track of things. So you don't get lost in the weeds. It's easy to get lost in the weeds. Or if you just need to possibly re reuse the, that information that was discovered in the scan, you'll have it right there in that text file. See so here, HTTP stuff here. If you wanted to use OpenSSL, which is a common tool you can use to analyze um, like certificate information on websites and such. It does other things as well, but that's just like a basic explanation of it. See IP route stuff here. IP routes, maybe you need to add an IP route in order to connect to a different network that that particular box that you compromised is connected to. Maybe it might be a dual homed box. And if there's another network that's hidden somewhere, and you'll need to connect to that network in order to exploit the rest of the networks or that additional network that you found. MAC address stuff, ARP cache, SQL map stuff again, John the Ripper, which is used in password cracking, Hydra used for brute forcing various different services, Hashcat, another thing for cracking passwords, you know, hash stuff like that, SMB stuff, enumerating SMB shares, which is with Windows. I mean, it's got different tools here you can use to get that information, it gives you the, the actual command and then the options or flags you needed to set in order to obtain that information, and wrap scripts, Checking for anonymous FTP, art poisoning, MySQL stuff, uh, go back to Derb, Go Buster again, MSF Venom, payload creation, which is in, I think, it, I don't know if it's in, in or uh, in uh, Mesploit itself or it's a, it's a separate thing you have to do. I think it's a separate, a separate tool you have to use. But anyway, it gives you the basic command output of that tool. And then of course, Meterpret has its own auto route stuff that might save a lot of time. Instead of manually inputting those routes, you can just use auto route command inside of Meterpreter in order to set those routes for you. All right, we're gonna take a look at a couple other sheet, cheat sheets here as well. All right, this cheat sheet is on Hion.coffee website. This one covers reverse shell, cheat sheet, PHP, Python, PowerShell, Bash, NC, which is Netcat, JSP, Java, Perl. So various different types of reverse shells that you can create using various different programming languages or different tools out there. And it goes over what reverse shell is, what it does, et cetera, et cetera. But we're gonna take a look down further on some of the command output here. Uh, NCAT, Netcat, NC, and then that's a little, flags your options you need to set to get it working properly. Uh, attacking IP explains what that stuff is. It goes over bash, reverse shells, uh, SOCAT, Golang, PHP, which will come handy when you start doing uh, web shells and such. Just a netcat reverse shell itself. Let's see here. Sometimes Massploit might not be available or maybe it'll be detected by some antivirus tool. Well, you can maybe you'll, you'll be able to use netcat instead or something, something else. Telnet, Perl, gives over various different different uh, languages and such, Kali, web shells, et cetera, et cetera. I'll have all this stuff posted in the description box. Let's take a look at one last cheat sheet. All right, this one is located on High on Coffee website as well. And this one is going to go over Nmap cheat sheet, commands and examples. As you can see, it's been updated back in February of this year. So it's relatively um, new or the information is relatively fresh. All right, let's just go down into the meat and potatoes here. Nmap in a nutshell, goes over what Nmap is. Sarah has got some commands out listed here. Gives you a description of what the command does to the target because you wanna know what you're actually conducting. You don't just want to fire off stuff and maybe you'll break something out there. Anyway, it goes over the commands, the flags or options set for those commands, description of it, um, scan from a file. As I said, when you collect those IP addresses, you can just, um, 
or if you have some IP addresses itself, you can put those in a text file and then use that in your nmap scans. Scan all ports. This may come in handy as well. Sometimes the nmap won't find anything on the most common ports out there. So you'll need to scan all those ports and see what's out there. Like on what's on ports, you know, 80, 81 or some, there might be a web server or something that you'll need to discover and then try to enumerate and then ultimately exploit. See more stuff here about formats, NetBio stuff, uh, Nikto, that's great. Goes over some more target specification stuff here. More options, commands of what it does. Basically, it's just going to give you everything about NMAP that you need to know for the EJPT exam or for other penetration testing exams or in the real world when you want to use NMAP as a, as a uh, tool. And that's it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you got any type of information from this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the comment section below. If you've taken the EJPT exam, give your thoughts and opinions on the exam, give your story on the exam, maybe it'll help someone else out that's viewing this video. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good day. See you later.